Welcome to StoryFlix. In this video, we will explain Kizora. This movie tells the story of a high school girl who has never felt true love. Until one day, she gets a mysterious call from an unknown man, who keeps calling her all the time until their relationship gets closer. Unfortunately, she did not know any information about the caller. Is this man her true love? Let's find out in Kizora. Kizora tells a story of a teenage girl, Mika Tahara, wearing lip gloss in the school bathroom. After that, she returned to class to have lunch with her best friend, Aya. One of their friends thought Mika had a boyfriend because she started dressing up at school. But she denies it, even though she says she really wants to experience what it's like to be in love. Their conversation attracted Aya, and she immediately said she had experienced her first love. Aya then reveals that she is in love with a student in another class named Nozomu. One of her friends was quite surprised to find out that Aya liked Nozomu because she judged his appearance as a delinquent with lots of piercings and earrings in his ears. After lunch, Mika and Aya and another friend came to see Nozomu in his class during the break. He is not in class, but they run into Nozomu and his friends in the school corridor. Mika was afraid to see the appearance of Nozomu and his friends, but Aya admitted that she liked the style of appearance. When passing in the corridor, Nozomu approached Mika and asked her to get acquainted. Even though she kept shaking her head and dodging, Nozomu kept trying to get her number. Finally, Aya stood in front of Mika to give Nozomu her phone number. Mika avoids Nozomu and intends to leave him to exchange phone numbers with Aya. However, she accidentally bumps into one of Nozomu's friends, Hiroki Sakurai or Hiro. Hiro looked at Mika sharply, which made her even more scared, and she ran away while apologizing for bumping into him. Not long after, Aya caught up with Mika with a sour face and asked her not to snatch Nozomu from her. Apparently, while exchanging phone numbers, Nozomu insisted on getting Mika's number. Hearing that, Mika promised that she would never take Nozomu, even if she paid for it. Aya was happy again, and they together returned to class. Mika was alone in class, looking for her cell phone that suddenly disappeared the next day. Aya helps find Mika's cell phone, so they can easily find it from the ringing sound, but it seems Mika's cell phone is not in class. Mika then remembered that her cell phone might have been left in the library. But after searching for some time in the empty library, she couldn't find her cell phone either. Finally, she heard the sound of her cell phone ringing on the library bookshelves. Sure enough, Mika's cell phone, which was still ringing, was apparently tucked in between books. Mika finally picked up the phone on her cell phone, thinking the caller was Aya. What a shock when she heard a man's voice on the phone and quickly hung up. After that, she checked her phone and found all the contacts on her phone had been deleted. She thought that the previous caller had found her cell phone and deleted all contact phone numbers, so she immediately called back to scold him. But the man on the phone just wondered why she was so angry just because the phone number was missing. He thinks they will call first if they need to contact her, even though she hasn't saved the number. Mika was annoyed and again hung up the phone. But the calls from the mysterious man didn't stop there. Mika gets another call in the evening, making her even more annoyed because she has to get up at night. After that, the mysterious man kept on calling, even though sometimes she immediately hung up the phone or responded evilly. But over time, their relationship warms up and they tell each other about their respective lives at school. Despite having spoken several times over the phone, the mysterious caller still keeps his name and identity a secret. At one point, Mika again complained about how she felt unfair because the mysterious caller knew who she was while she didn't even know his name. Then she invited him to meet later at the beginning of the new school year. They talked all night on the phone until Mika didn't notice that it was already morning. The mysterious caller asked her to look out the window, where coincidentally, there was a plane passing by, leaving a chemtrail trail from the plane and telling her to take a photo as a memories of the morning they spent together. As requested by the mysterious caller, she took a photo of the chemtrail as a memories. The scene moves to Mika's birthday, which doesn't go well, because her parents are fighting. As saddened Mika was slightly comforted when the mysterious caller asked her to come to the school's swimming pool tomorrow, so they could celebrate their birthday together. The next day at school, Mika expresses her nervous feelings to Aya, who is helping her to dress up before meeting the mysterious caller. With feelings of fear and worry, Mika went to the swimming pool. But when she came, there was no one in the pool. After waiting for a while, looking at the beautiful view from the pool's edge, a blonde-haired man suddenly approached from behind. Mika turned her head and was immediately surprised to see Hiro. 
Mika originally intended to leave the pool, but Hiro caught her hand. He prevents her from leaving and instead teases her for using makeup. He then offered her flowers as a birthday present and introduced himself as Hiro, the man talking to her over the phone. Mika doesn't believe that the man on the phone is Hiro, so he shows her the chemtrail photo they took together the previous morning. She was shocked to know that and immediately ran back to class. In class, at first, Mika didn't tell about the identity of the mysterious caller, who apparently was Hiro. She only told Aya that the man had white hair and a scary appearance. But Aya quickly guessed that the man she was talking about was Hiro, Nozomu's close friend. Their friends overheard the conversation and chimed in the rumors spreading that Hiro already had a girlfriend at another school. When Mika came home from school, she followed Hiro, running while carrying a plastic bag. The plastic apparently contains fertilizer, which Hiro uses to plant the flowers that Mika had previously given to him. That's when Mika asked Hiro about his girlfriend, to which he replied that they had broken up. Mika had secretly had feelings for Hiro, which grew when he directed the water reflection into the sky to make a rainbow as a birthday present. Since then, their relationship has grown closer, and Mika often secretly meets Hiro at school. Even she complied when he asked her to skip school to go to his house. When Mika was about to enter Hiro's house, she met Hiro's older sister, Minako Sakurai, who was about to leave. So that at home, there will only be Mika and Hiro. They spend a pleasant time at the house until finally making out in bed. While Mika was tidying clothes, Hiro, half asleep, called her name Saki. Okay. Feeling heartbroken and sad, Mika immediately left Hiro's house without saying goodbye. On the way, Mika gets a message from Hiro apologizing for falling asleep and not being able to take her home. She initially wanted to ask about Saki, but she refused and only asked if she could trust him. He replies to Mika's message and convinces her to believe him. One day, Mika was waiting for Hiro, who was late to arrive, when a black car stopped in front of her. Two men got out of the car and violently pulled her inside. She manages to escape from the car, but the three men chase her. After being caught, they harassed Mika and took her picture before leaving her alone. It was already night when she finally came to her senses and ran home. Mika heard Hiro was looking for her on the way, but she decided to hide. But Hiro finally managed to find Mika, though she initially tried to run and avoid him. Mika seems to feel that she is already dirty because of the abuse she just experienced, but Hiro calms her down and instead promises to take revenge. After bringing Mika home, Hiro goes to find the three men who kidnapped and abused her. He found the three men in a warehouse and immediately beat them all. The men confessed to committing these heinous acts on Saki's orders. Hearing this, Hiro's emotions peaked and immediately destroyed the recorded evidence when Saki ordered the delinquents to kidnap and rape Mika. At the Sakurai's house, Minako approached Mika, sitting alone, and suggested that she go to the hospital for a checkup. She comforted Mika and hugged her, ensuring that she and Hiro would always be there for her. There was a loud noise not long after, which turned out to be Hiro returning home while dragging Saki. He says that she is his ex-girlfriend and the mastermind behind a bad incident that Mika just experienced. When Mika is frightened and can't order Hiro to punish Saki, Minako acts first by pulling Saki's hair and cutting it mercilessly. After that, Hiro drove Mika home and reasoned that her body was injured by falling off the bicycle. Mika's parents don't like him much because Mika's mother immediately pulled Mika into the house while her father violently closed the door in Hiro's face. The next morning Mika didn't go to school because she was going to the hospital. Apparently, she had already informed her mother about the rape incident. And they went to the hospital to confirm her condition. After returning from the hospital, even though her condition was confirmed to be fine, Mika was still very devastated. She locked herself in her room and just stared at the school uniform. That's when Hiro called and asked her to open the bedroom window. Mika saw Hiro coming to pick her up on a bicycle from the bedroom window. Finally, she melted and seemed to have the strength to go to school with him. But the kidnapping and harassment were not the ends of the terror experienced by Mika. Mika gets a message saying she doesn't deserve Hiro and the writing on the blackboard is all loud. Hiro is furious and threatens anyone who annoys Mika. To calm Hiro's anger, Mika pulled him into the library, which was deserted at the time. And she said that she would not be afraid because there was him who always protected her. A few months later, Mika experiences nausea while having dinner with her family. At the same time, 
she received a message containing the word break. Even though she said she was fine, Mika's parents still forced her to see a doctor. The scene changes when Hiro comes to a cafe after getting a message from Mika. Mika nervously says that she is pregnant with his child. Hiro did not expect the news to immediately leave and left her alone. But he apparently didn't run away but instead went to buy gifts. When Mika was about to leave the cafe, Hiro actually ran back while giving gifts and congratulating her. He promises to make her happy. After that, they bought a couple rings and went to Mika's house to meet her parents. Hiro said he would quit school and work to provide for Mika and his child. Mika's mother gives her blessing to Mika and Hiro, but her father still doubts and doesn't believe what happened to his daughter. At school, Saki and her friends bully Mika again after hearing that Hiro will quit school. When she pushes Mika down the stairs, Mika still looks not afraid and instead tells how Saki uses dirty methods to get what she wants. On the other hand, while taking a walk with Hiro on Christmas Eve, Mika experiences a severe stomachache. The scene changes when Mika wakes up in the hospital room and is already surrounded by her family. She was sad and devastated when her mother told her that she had a miscarriage. Hiro had just arrived when Mika was going home to the hospital. Apparently, he went to buy amulets for Mika's healing and their baby to be safe. Unfortunately, at that time, their baby had died. Hiro and Mika burst into tears and brought gifts of amulets and dolls from Hiro to the park near the school, where previously he planted flowers to be given to her. After praying together for their baby, Hiro invites Mika to promise to come to the place every year on December 24 to commemorate the baby's death. Time passes and Mika and Hiro's relationship is strained. Until finally, one day, Hiro broke up with Mika and said he wanted to date another girl. She is so sad and angry that she throws the ring he gave her. After that, Hiro always avoids Mika, even though she keeps trying to send messages and call him asking him to meet. She tries to forget him, even though she is very sad and sick. Finally, she decides to never fall in love again. The scene changes one year later. On December 24, Mika came to Aya's house because Aya said the cure for a breakup was to meet another man. Sure enough, Aya's house already had several friends, one of whom was introduced to Mika. Mika's male friend is Yu Fukuhara, a college student with a mature personality who accompanies Mika throughout the party. Even though Yu is a fun and mature person, Mika still doesn't feel comfortable. Until finally, she looked out the window where it was snowing. She suddenly remembered something and then left the party at Aya's house. Mika apparently went to the park and didn't see Hiro. There was only the tiny snowman that Hiro might have previously made when he came first. That night it snowed heavily, and apparently, Yu came after Mika to bring an umbrella. He was worried because she suddenly came out of Aya's house and immediately chazzed after her. After that, he took her into the car to take her home. Mika and Yu's relationship becomes closer, but Mika still can't forget Hiro. Even what Yu treats makes her even more reminded of Hiro. One day at the beach, Yu confesses his love for Mika by giving her a bunch of flowers, which she refuses. He then asks what kind of man she likes, and she describes that the man is like a river that continues to flow until it leaves her. Hearing that, Yu said he wished he could be the sea for her. No matter how long, he would always come back. In the end, Mika receives flowers from Yu and realizes that her love for him is very different from her feelings for Hiro. On December 24th at that time, Yu took Mika to the park. When Mika was walking alone in the snow, she was surprised to see Hiro there. When they meet, the two talk awkwardly, and Mika wonders why Hiro is wearing a hat. After laying flowers for their late baby, she asks him why their relationship had to end. He seemed unable to answer for a moment and only encouraged her to finish the university entrance exam and then ran away. She initially intended to chase him, but eventually returned to Yu, who was already waiting in the car. Hiro apparently came during the graduation ceremony. Meanwhile, Mika manages to enter university, and her relationship with Yu becomes even closer. On the following December 24, Yu again escorted Mika to the park. Before Mika gets out of the car, Yu gives her a ring and completely asks her to be his. She smiled happily, agreed to his request, and got out of the car. In the park, Mika again saw a man. But the man is apparently not Hiro but Nozomu, who says from now on he will come every December 24 to replace Hiro. Nozomu's words make Mika confused until finally, he tells about Hiro's condition, which has been suffering from cancer since two years ago. 
もうすぐ死んじゃうかもしれない。Mika realized that Hiro broke up, not because he didn't love her anymore, but because he didn't want to burden her with his illness. She fell into tears in the garden. On the other hand, Yu was worried that Mika didn't come back, so he followed suit. Mika said Hiro had cancer, but Yu prevented her from going to Hiro. The ring on Mika's finger accidentally falls off, making Yu realize that he can't stop the one he loves from being happy. In the end, Yu lets Mika go, even though his heart is broken. The scene shifts to the hospital when Mika meets Hiro, lying weak and still wearing their ring. Hiro asks Mika to come back to Yu, so she can be happy, and says that he will not live long. She says she will always love him, and they finally get back together. Every day, Mika visits Hiro at the hospital, and she doesn't stop asking God for a miracle. Hiro's condition gradually recovered until he was discharged from the hospital. While taking a walk and reminiscing about the past, Mika challenges Hiro to marry her. He immediately replies that he will do whatever she asks. After that, they took their wedding vows and gave a flower crown to Mika's head. <laughs> After that, Hiro's condition worsened until one day, Mika got a call from Minako that Hiro was critical. As Mika runs toward the hospital, Minako calls her through video call and confronts her with Hiro, who asks her to smile before closing his eyes. Hiro's death makes Mika really hit to lose her passion for life. One afternoon before sunset, Mika was on the bridge when two white doves suddenly flew low towards her, causing Hiro's diary she was holding to fall to the ground. After Hiro's death, she finally reads the book, which Minako had previously entrusted to Mika's mother. On the book's last page, Hiro wrote down his wish for Mika to always smile and drew a picture of a family consisting of a father, little daughter, and mother. The scene of Mika looking up at the sky while crying remembers Hiro being the ending of the film Sky of Love. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, don't date too much and don't give up on loving someone until your last breath.